Hello, crypto boys and ghouls, and welcome back to the channel, Tales from the Cryptmancer, where we feature content on play to earn games on the blockchain, such as Splinterlands. And in today's video, I want to talk about card watching cards that you should be paying attention to in the marketplace because of their value, their potential to appreciate, and well, just their general use in the game. And this was a clip from a conversation that we had for our members only here earlier last week, talking to uh, our members just about different topics. And uh, this is one of the benefits that uh, joining the channel here as a member offers. We do weekly and monthly um, town halls and AMAs is just one of the benefits, one of the many benefits for our members. So if videos and insight like this are important to get on a timely basis, feel free to check that out in the video description below for more details. We'll hop into the clip here and until next time, keep stacking those stats. Let's talk a little bit about card watching. Card watching within Splinterlands right now, and it may sound like a little bit of a broken record here, but there are some cards that have significant value that, again, I don't think people are really understanding what's happening right now. So what am I talking about? Well, in this particular case, I'm talking about the Pelagor Conjurer. Um, this card, and let's just look at him at max level. This card is so critical for life, certainly at the low mana levels. Like he's a must have, must play in modern or wild in low mana. So anything from 12 mana to let's say 20 mana. And he's even in consideration uh, in battles, let's say from 20 to, to 32 mana potentially as a tank for your life team. And this card is selling literally for a penny. Like I'm buying him as we speak for one penny. And that's just highway robbery to me. Um, look at this card stats. It's got five at the max level. It's got five speed, eight health. It's got flight. So it basically makes, makes its speed effectively 7.5. It's got magic reflect. It's got uh, divine shield and it's got phase. That's tremendous value. And look at this, we look at the circulation here. The circulation is 1.6 million. And you're probably going tails, why am I caring about this card? It's got 1.6 million copies of this card in existence. There's only like, you know, let's say 30 to 50,000 human players of Splinterlands and even with the bots, who don't really have max level Pelicor Conjurers in their arsenal or looking to use today, which I believe will change over time. But even if we have, let's say 150,000 daily active accounts, 150,000 accounts, there's 1.6 million cards out there. And that's way too many, but I would say, wait, let's do the math. If you look at the math here and you take 1.61, million and you realize that it takes 400 copies of the Pelicor conjurer to get to a max level copy so you divide that 1.6 million divided by 400. now obviously the Pelicor conjurer is not uh, fully printed yet uh, in fact if we go to the kiyokiz website we're going to see here that the Pelicor conjurer is almost 77 percent printed so it's got about 23 percent more to print but if we just do the math what we realize with all the pelicor conjurers in existence there can only be 4026 max copies of the pelicor conjurer based on the current printed numbers now it doesn't include gold foil but the regular foil that means only 4026 players in the champion or diamond level in the future, we'll be able to use a max level Pelicor Conjurer. Now today, it's not a problem because we don't have 4,000 total players in Champion and Diamond today. But guess what? As the game grows, it doesn't take too many players added to the game before we get to that level. 
And what do you think the, is going to happen when those players come in here and see a card like the Pelicor Conjure and say, I need this card to function at these levels? Uh, not including you know gold, silver, and bronze, which is also going to be necessary to use this card. Then you re realize that 1.6 million is not a lot. You know, 4,000 players. Again, in the game, let's say you, you're conservative and you say there's only 30,000 players in the game. We just told you that only 4,000 of them are going to ever be able to potentially have a max level Pelicor Conjure, at least based on current print runs. There'll be more printed here, like I said, another 23% before it's out of print. But even still, let's say that adds, what, uh, 1,000 more copies of the Pelicor Conjure available. That means only 5,000 players would ever have a max level copy of this card. Do you think that Splinterlands, at the peak of its existence, will have more than 5,000 competitive players that might want this card? I say yes. And I say the reason for that is look at existing untamed cards that are similar to the Pelicor Conjure. Let's look at the Failed Summoner. Also two mana, a key card for Earth. It's uh, two speed. It's got nine health. So it's got more health by one than the Pelicor Conjurer. It's also got Magic Reflect, and it's got support abilities of Demoralize and Strengthen. This is a key card for Earth, and every Earth player would want to have this card in their collection. Guess what? This card right now is selling for, in the current market environment, $1.70. $1.70 is a heck of a lot more than one penny. And yes, I understand the circulation is lower, right? But the utility of the card is the same, or in some cases you could say the Pelicor Conjurer is better than the Failed Summoner. So as the players increase organically over time, you could definitely see sooner rather than later, later the price appreciation on the Pelicor Conjurer being much more than one cent. What does one cent mean? Right? So let, let's say you go to Starbucks and you buy a coffee for $5 in the US. Well, for $5, you could actually buy a day instead of a coffee, 500 Pelicor Conjures in the current market. And let's say that Pelicor Conjure goes up to $1.70 in the future, right? Well, that coffee that you just uh, skipped today and bought Pelicor Conjurers instead, in the future, that coffee could be worth $850. And that's the power. That's the power of this game and the assets being deflationary in nature provide. Can you imagine foregoing a Starbucks coffee today and two years from now, instead of $5, you had $850? That's pretty powerful. And it's not beyond the realm of reason or possibility. But wait, there's more. Let me share with you another card that's very similar to the Pelicor Conjurer, and that's the Kelp Initiate. Again, a two mana card. It's a tank card that's essential for low mana matches, right? Uh, it's also a good off tank in the support card. Six speed, nine health, comes with cleanse and triage. Again, similar role and function in the life team to what the uh, kelp initiate does for water and what does this card sell for well a dollar 55 so that's obviously more than a penny and the same argument that we just had with the uh, failed summoner applies to the kelp initiate but wait there's one more i want to show you not only the card comparisons that we just walked through for the Kelp Initiate and the Failed Summoner as kind of like if you were buying a house and you're looking at prices, you have to do comparables for um, value purposes, for loans and mortgages. What I wanna show you is a battle with a Kelp Initiate just to show you how valuable this card is. It's not even the Pelicor Conjurer, which honestly in many cases could be better, but this is just the card in action that shows you how valuable this two mana tank is. Now you can see how meta this card is. Uh, I'm at the top here in gold here, playing a Kelp Initiate, a Albatross, an Axe Master, and a Fiend. 
my opponent is playing, surprise, surprise, a Kelp Initiate, a Saber Shark, a Pelicor Conjurer, an Albatross, and a um, Hardy Stonefish. Before we play the battle, we show the value of this two mana Kelp Initiate, which is comparable to the Pelicor Conjurer. I want to call your attention to what cards are being played in this battle. This is a 13 mana gold one battle, right? And you see a Kelp Initiate, it's a reward card being played. You see an Axe Master, it's a reward card being played. You see a Pelicor Bandit, it's a reward card being played. All of these cards, when they were reward cards, were available for cheap while they were in print. And the Axe Master is still meta, the Pelicor Bandit meta, the Cup Initiate meta. So what I'm saying here is this is a gold one, you know, meta battle. These reward cards are being used, they're valuable. And the cards that are out of print, like the Axe Master and the Cup Initiate, have already gone up in price quite a bit. So don't sleep on reward cards. Uh, definitely make them part of your overall strategy as it uh, pertains to your Spongebob Lands assets. And let's just walk through the battle here and see what happens and why these two mana cards are so valuable. Pelicor Conjurer, doing work, get two misses with the six speed on the opponent's Kelp Initiate. And then the Pelicor Bandit kills my Axe Master. And he had a little bit of lag there on the video, but basically the Kelp Initiate was six speed was able to dodge the six damage that would have wiped it out pretty much um, from the Axe Master uh, across a turn and a half. And the Axe Master is not slow, it's got four speed. But even if the Axe Master had hit both of its double strikes on turn one, there still would have been health left on the Kelp Initiate. That's how valuable that tank is at two mana. The Axe Master is a seven mana card. And in one round at seven mana with double strike, doing six damage, couldn't even kill the Kelp Initiate, even if it had hit both of its attacks. So the Kelp Initiate, the Failed Summoner, the Pelicor Conjurer with that high health, low mana, and all those supporting abilities is going to be a meta card uh, for the foreseeable future and is not something you should sleep on. And that's